Hello, my name is Aaron Ramirez, and I'm a doctoral candidate here in the MIT Department of Mechanical Engineering. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to use a milling machine, one of the most versatile machines you can use in any modern makerspace. Milling is a subtractive process, which means that it works by physically removing material from the part. You can cut pretty much any shape you want, as long as the tool and the workpiece can handle the cutting forces involved. It's a very flexible process, and most engineers would say it's one of the most versatile machines you can have in the shop. A mill works by rotating a cutting tool and plunging it through material. This is an example of an end mill. It's got two cutting edges, and the mill rotates it and simultaneously moves it through a workpiece to remove material from the workpiece to create your geometry. An end mill can be used to cut pretty much any material, as long as the material is not harder than the end mill. However, the harder the material is, the more difficult it is to cut. I have a couple of materials here. Plastic is very easy to machine. Aluminum is very easy to machine. Wood is also easy to machine. But you'll want to talk to your shop instructor first, because some shops prefer to separate their wood machine from their plastic and metal machine. A milling machine can be used in full CNC, semi-CNC, or completely manual. Manual milling is generally used for simpler geometries, such as straight lines or flat surfaces, where you only have to move one axis at a time. CNC means computer numerically controlled, which means that the computer on the machine controls all three axes of motion. So you can perform synchronized 3D motion. So you can machine things like domes, spirals, or irregular contours. And finally, semi-CNC is halfway between manual machining and full CNC. If you need to make a super precise part, we're talking tolerances of less than a sixteenth of an inch, you should use a milling machine. The decision to use manual versus CNC is left up to the discretion of whoever's doing the machining. Generally, you can make more complex parts with the CNC, but it takes more time up front to set up. So as a machinist, I might find it quicker to just make a part manually, but in some cases the geometry might be too complex. So I may decide that I don't have a choice except to use CNC. Let's talk about how the milling machine is distinct from some of the other machines you might encounter in a makerspace. So a laser cutter, a laser cutter is able to cut 2D geometries, uh, which means it can't cut pockets, it can't cut at controlled depths, um, and it can only cut in plastics unless you have a very expensive laser cutter. A milling machine is distinct from a drill press in that a drill press can't sustain lateral loads. So if I'm drilling a hole, that's okay. If I'm trying to cut a slot or a pocket, you're going to break your drill press if you try. People have tried it. So it always starts with some kind of a sketch, some kind of an idea. So you take your sketch and you convert it into some kind of shop drawing with dimensions. Uh, what, what's important is that you want to separate the designer from the machinist. The next step is after you have your part, is you need to plan out what tools you need for your operations, right? So if you're drilling, you're going to need drills. If you're milling, you need to decide what size end mills do you need, uh, what material end mills. And that tool selection depends on the material you're machining as well as the geometry you're trying to create. If you're doing a CNC job, then you need to take your, your drawing. If it's a CAD drawing, you need to assign toolpaths to it. For that, you typically use what's called CAM software, which is computer-aided manufacturing. Then you need to load the part onto your machine. You need to set up your tools, fixture your part, and then start cutting. Specific safety considerations for the mill. In general, you want to be careful when you're changing tools because some of these tools can be sharp. So be careful how you hold them. Uh, another consideration is when the machine is actually cutting, the table is moving around. And you don't want to stand somewhere where you can get whacked by the table as it's moving around at potentially high speeds. Lastly, you want to be on the lookout for any kind of abnormal noises. So any kind of crunching noise, any kind of squealing, anything that hurts to listen to, that's a sign that something's wrong with the machine, and you should stop your operation and contact your shop instructor immediately. Now that we've covered what a milling machine is and what it's used for, go ahead and use the Mobius app to find a shop near you that has a milling machine and talk to the technical instructor there to begin the process of learning how to use one of these extremely useful and versatile machines.